the government really stressing here um, there was always a possibility this would happen in this trial. Let's be frank, you know, medical science is complicated stuff. They were taking mm. part of the HIV, the, the virus itself. It was a small component. It's giving a false positive. Um, any criticism from the government here? They seem to have replaced the stock of vaccine yeah, I think so. doses I mean, pretty quickly. I think the first thing is I really feel for the scientists and researchers who would have spent, you know, hours, hundreds, thousands of hours doing mm. this. You know, it might still be useful. Yes, that's right. Yeah. And we, because obviously we know from Europe that there is um, people who've been researching coronavirus for a long time, for several years, because of the other types of coronavirus that have been around. And I think, uh, you know, it's obviously all of that research is always helpful. But I guess I think of them. My, my father's a scientist and I'm a... University of Queensland is my alma mater. So I do think about them. But I also think that what not it great we have such a strong regulatory regime here in Australia on pharmaceuticals? Mm. So we know that when we do have a vaccine that it will... You know, we have absolute confidence in it. And I think, you know, CSL is one of the great blood products companies in the world. I mean, it's a really... It's a really strong company and I think, you know, we've seen their great successes they've had over a very long time. And, you know, as a former Melbourne City Councillor, uh, CSL was in, in the city of Melbourne and uh, I, was, um, I have been lucky enough to visit there. So they're another great company. So mm. it is disappointing, but we have... It looks like we've replaced the stock. Yeah, and this clamp technology, I'm not going to explain it more than that because I wouldn't know how to, <laughs> might still be used, so let's hope so. Yeah. I was interested as well in your thoughts, actually. Um, if we've got National Cabinet on today... Mm. Mark McGowan didn't come. He didn't want to be in the same room as Stephen Marshall because he's from South Australia. They haven't had a single case for 12 days. Is that a bit dramatic? Well, I guess it's up to Premier McGowan what he wants to do and where he wants to do National Cabinet from. Uh, and, of course, they haven't met. I heard Anastasia, um, the Premier of Queensland, on the radio this morning and on television saying, you know, they haven't met for nine months and it's a long time and I think it's always good to be in a room but it's obviously up to people how they feel about that and, you know, how they... How they it's going to be important themselves. we have confidence, though, in crossing mm -hmm. state borders again and being places and even having visitors there. It just seems like WA increasingly is taking such an extreme approach to this. Well, you know, they've always had a secessionist tendency, Tom, so... Uh, we I don't think... want to fan that, do we? Because it... No, I mean, we are one This nation. tendency that we all, always joke about, I mean, your colleague Patrick Gorman said he feels like it's getting more serious over there. Yes, I saw that. It wouldn't help WA. They need, you know, oh. a defence force apart from anything else. wouldn't help us. They've got a lot of red dirt... It helps the country when we ship it off to various countries? Yeah, I think that... I mean, we are a Commonwealth and it's... You know, we should behave like one, but I think, uh, you know, it's really... It's up to him, but I, I think that hopefully when the next National Cabinet meets, they can all be in the one room. Because I think there's a different dynamic. Mm. I know because, you know, Melbourne did 111 days of lockdown and I did all of that time in Melbourne yeah. and it's very different being in the room, you know, compared with being on Zoom or being remote... And it's been really good this fortnight to be able to come to Canberra and to meet people, you know, see people in person. Like you, for example. It's much better being in the studio. Indeed. <laughs> I, I just never thought we'd be talking about the grave crime of knowingly mixing with South Australians, but here we are. The Magnitsky Act is going to be introduced into Parliament next year. You've been pushing for this. Human rights offenders essentially mm. banned from entering, entering Australia. Who would this affect right now? Who, who won't be able to come to Australia well, after this has passed? Well, anyone who's committed human rights violations. Of course, there would be a check. So, really, it's about uh, denying visas for people. It's also about any property they might have here. So, in other jurisdictions that have Magnitsky legislation, we know that uh, those people's property has been seized if they have been able to purchase that property from ill-gotten gains. So, is there anyone that has come to Australia in the past 10 years, say, mm. or has property in Australia right now that this would affect? Well, I don't want to really name, but we know name particular people. But we know, for example, from a Four Corners program, that there are members of the Cambodian regime who have threatened diaspora, the diaspora community in Melbourne. And we know that you know these are serious threats. We know, in fact, from another inquiry that the Senate's undertaking at the moment, that there have been uh, there are Uyghurs in Australia who are very nervous, both for themselves and for their families, who are in Xinjiang, and they're fearful of retribution. And, in fact, what we did know is that um, 
you know, sometimes we those people are not comfortable giving evidence uh, in a public forum uh, because they do they do worry about right about this. The this will have real impacts. We're not talking about a theoretical here. No, we're not. Okay. And we know from other jurisdictions, one of the powers is that the naming of people so that people know that those people are not acceptable. I mean, we live in this in our country, you know, where we we do not condone some of the behaviours that some people you know, undertake, that they, you know, that they'll... We know that there are places in the world where, uh, you know, generals have, you know, corruptly embezzled, where they have taken over whole swathes of a country, where people have been killed um, because they're of a different ethnicity or a different religion. We don't accept that here. We do believe in the rights of minorities. We do believe in free and fair elections. So, for example, if you're an opposition candidate in some countries in the world... Well, that can lead to serious jail yeah. time just for standing up for what you believe in. Russia in particular. Mm. Uh, how do you think, just turning to sort of a year look back at politics, how does Labor end the year, do you think? I think, look, we've had a pretty busy week in the Senate and I did ask the tables office uh, this morning uh, for some stats on what we did in the Senate in the last fortnight. I don't have today, uh, yesterday's data included, but we did 120 divisions... Uh, the longest day was just shy of 15 hours. Uh, we considered 43 bills and passed 35. So it was fairly busy. I think um, that, you know, I, th I think that we've been very good at holding this government to account. I think we can see even just in this past week, I mean, there were IR laws that have gone back to the, to the drawing board. They've, uh, we've had the cashless debit card, which was amended, partly from because there were very powerful speeches given by Malandiri McCarthy, who's a senator for the Northern Territory, and Pat Dodson, who's a well, senator for WA. Well, they were amended just because the of the numbers, weren't they? The government well, didn't I listen think to those, those speeches. Well, I, I, Do you think I they think, influenced the crossbenches? I think it did, and I okay. think that that meant that the government had to uh, redraft some of that. You were reported as at this latest Otis dinner this week in Parliament, not at the Otis restaurant. What's the, what's the vibe well, there? Well, you know, I mean, you know, Tom, that there's been lots of gatherings in the last couple of weeks as people sort of say goodbye for the end of the year. Mm. And also I think for a lot of people who haven't been able to come to Canberra freely from around the country, you know, it's been good to catch up with people. And that's all this, this was. And it was just to, to really to acknowledge Joel Fitzgibbon's role as the former national convener and former convener of New South Wales. So He also had a bit to say about Anthony Albanese on the way out. It was obviously a difficult year to get traction as opposition leader, but are there any paths you turned down this year you shouldn't have or perhaps missed avenues here? No, and I actually say I think that, you know, I listened to Anthony's... Um, his addresses to caucus, and obviously it is, again, I say it's different being in the room because obviously for most of the year I've done it remotely, but or certainly the second half of the year, and they were really very inspiring, just really about looking after Australians who, who sometimes don't always have everything that maybe some other people don't have. So it was us, remember, who and Anthony, who really promoted the stimulus packages about job seeker and job keeper. It was about, uh, you know, just the IR laws this week and the concern that we have about penalty rates, uh, those being lost and obviously the better over off overall test right. being affected by this legislation. And that was Anthony. So I think we've, we've, you know, we're ending the, the year in a pretty good position. And I would say, Tom, that we know from recent times that it's not the person sometimes who says the most outlandish thing or the most populist thing who is successful. And I would say that the press gallery here and perhaps in America as well sometimes underestimates people. So, uh, you know, we've seen that recently in elections. So I think, you know, we've ended the year fairly well. Kimberly Kitching, that's where we'll end of the year. I'll talk to you next year. Enjoy Lovely. your break. Thank you. Merry Christmas. You too.